welcome everyone on this first Sunday of spring, which is also the fifth Sunday of Lent. Today, our focus will be on the overcomer. It's inspired by Fillmore's book, Keep It True Lent, and specifically calls on his teachings of being an overcomer in life. But let's begin with our time of meditation. Take a deep breath. Make sure you're comfortable where you're seated. Stretch out your spine if you can. And let us join as one in this meditation. Dear friends, we each and every one are overcomers. An overcomer is one who recognizes the truth of being and who is intentionally renewing mind, body, and external affairs by changing one's own thoughts. For as we know, thoughts held in mind produce in kind. By moving away from old limiting beliefs to new, more positive, powerful, Christ-centered beliefs, the overcomer demonstrates divine law at work in the innermost levels of your consciousness. Spiritual power, mastery, and dominion can be attained by the steadily persistent overcomer. And the way of overcoming is to have faith. Faith in your own divine inheritance as a child of God. And then to demonstrate it. Demonstrate it through every thought and word and deed. Yes, my friends, I know we are shooting for the stars. And I ask, why not? In Unity's teachings, the law of mind action tells us that we become like those people or things that we hold in our minds. This bears repeating. The law of mind action tells us that we become like those people or things that we're holding in our minds. Dear friends, I dare to ask, what are we each persistently holding on to in our own hearts and minds. Take even a casual inventory. What images, what fantasy, what deep desires or noble aspirations or Lord, help us. What pent up frustration or woundedness are we holding on to long after 
the proverbial expiration date has passed. Dear friends, forgiving is an inside job. And by the grace of God, Christ is one perfect pattern to hold in mind. In order to overcome worldly challenges, errors and false beliefs, self-imposed limitations, we can each learn to identify ourselves more closely with Christ consciousness. Please take a deep breath with me and open to deeply receiving words of truth. We can learn to identify ourselves with Christ consciousness. No external condition or circumstance can hold us in bondage for long. When we connect with our God source within, the eternal wellspring of all that is, opens to us. Let's each take a deep cleansing breath. Again, no condition or circumstance can hold us in bondage for long when we connect with our God source within the eternal wellspring of all that is. The real question now is, are you ready to receive? Ready and willing to truly receive this bounty. We have each received many blessings, yet so often we take them for granted or turn a blind eye on possibilities. Or most sadly, do not feel worthy enough to embrace God's outpouring of good Dear friends, hear my words of truth. Each and every one, you are worthy and a beloved child of God. You have been richly blessed. Begin today to more frequently praise God for the abundance of all things. And on that day, change will truly begin. On this day, in this moment, begin to more frequently give thanks for your own wondrous and glorious Christ self expressing, expressing in each and every now moment. And soon you will begin to see that God's will begins to mightily flow to and through you from all direction. 
with increasing ease, my friends, before you know it, you will realize and then demonstrate the very truth of your being on a regular basis. You are an overcomer. Yes, you, right here, right now. Let us each affirm this truth. Repeat aloud or silently if you like. This passage, through Christ within, I am an overcomer. I rest in the realization of God's grace and power flowing through and as me right here and right now. Through Christ within, I am an overcomer and I rest in the realization of God's grace and power flowing through and as me right here, right now. And so it is. Amen. Amen. The word for today is forgive, forgive. I extend forgiveness to myself. Throughout my life, I have forgiven those who have hurt and disappointed me. In turn, I have been grateful when others extended understanding and forgiveness with me. Even though I have learned to be forgiving with others, I may still find it difficult to forgive myself for mistakes I've made, disappointments I have caused, and commitments I have broken. Today, I open my heart and with love and compassion, I forgive myself. I remind myself that everyone makes mistakes and deserves understanding and forgiveness, even me. I remember how the prodigal son's father received him with joy when he came home. This joy is mine when I let go of self-condemnation and finally come home to myself. And the scripture is, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. From Luke chapter 15, verse 20. And so it is. Today, um, I would like us to focus on um, some teachings from Charles Fillmore um, during a, the Lenten season. I, some of you may be following his Keep a True Lent book. And this is based on his teachings on overcoming. I was raised to believe that life is a school of sorts, which develops our innate powers through our earthly experiences. Like any school, uh, we find students of differing exposure and degrees of mastery with the lessons and the challenges encountered. Unlike a formal school, we each learn life lessons at different times in different ways. Like the proverbial song, I'll take the high road, you take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland before ye. 
the school of life. The school of life allows us to choose our life lessons, our personal battles, our high roads and low roads, all in our own time. It's definitely an independent study requiring a deep dive, a deep dive into the very core of our being. It would appear that just when we feel accomplished in one arena of life, we're called to take on an even more advanced study course. And in that moment, like me, have you ever looked up to the heavens and asked, really, God, really? <laughs> on top of all else going on, I'm supposed to cross this bridge? I'm called to take on this life lesson, and of course, with free will and all, we can dodge and cut class anytime we want. The caveat being, we really, we really only get to postpone the life lesson. It seems that we can't cut class forever when it comes to spiritual development. Oh, sure, we can cut class and postpone and dodge and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But really and truly to the best I can figure out, we each have to make it through the whole curriculum in one lifetime or another. You know, it's kind of like working out. It doesn't always sound like fun. And sometimes it leaves you a wee bit sore. But eventually, if you hang in there, if you learn and you grow and, and through every experience, you try to gain better techniques. Well, often you find yourself on a wisdom path, a wisdom path that is just right for you. Now that's not to say it's all a cakewalk. And in my case, well, I got really mad I got mad for a while at God about my own cognitive limitations. I got mad at my brain for allowing itself to be so injured by bacterial meningitis. I got mad that life no longer comes easy as the saying goes. was kind of like Samson's hair cutting and his subsequent loss of strength. Bacterial meningitis robbed me of what, at the time, I then considered my own secret sauce. I was a straight A kind of gal all my life. Until one day, I wasn't. And it was about that time that I truly began walking on the path of the overcomer, as Charles Fillmore called it. Right up front, I can share that being an overcomer, overcomer does not mean always attaining 
every object of your desire. For me, it is the gift of seeing myself as an overcomer. Having the dawning realization that I am not a one trick pony. <laughs> and that my friends, God's well never runs dry. Although it's true, I'm not the same I once was, I can today honestly say it's for the better as well as the worst. The immediate loss of some brain function was devastating. I think kind of like Samson getting his hair cut off. Yet, as time goes by, I really am finding a pathway to accepting, and I hope soon, embracing more fully the new me. Like most folks, for better or worse, I am all in, ready or not, to live and love and grow and to be the best me I can be here and now. I am humbled to have to ask what for others are simple questions, the answers to which I could once offer up, frankly, even in my sleep, in the dead of night, if a child came crawling in my bed and asked a question. Today, my actions and choices, well, frankly, every single step, is taken more carefully and thoughtfully now. I used to read voraciously. And now I've come to embrace my fondness for haiku. And my musical preferences now include classical a wee bit more than hard rock. Sweet harmonies take me back to my childhood when everyone else in the family sang in harmony while they did the dinner dishes. <laughs> and as the youngest, I danced and pranced and made them all smile. Today, most of my actions and choices are made more slowly, more intentionally actually, more carefully, more thoughtfully. And best of all, it seems, <laughs> more soulfully. These are the years of more reflection and deep appreciation. More that than the questing and wrestling with the angels, some of which I admit now feel like my dear friends. I write reminders on my cell phone and I ask Alexa to remind me of appointments and dear friends' birthdays. And I wait cheerfully for a fresh video 
of our only grandchild, Charlotte Jane Doberstein. I ask more questions again, and I apologize if I had just asked it a few moments ago and already forgotten the answer. And now I'm able to do that without shame. Because my friends, one way or another, I am an overcomer. The fact that I have devised workarounds and shortcuts and mnemonic devices to remember things, well, at this point, I'm no longer ashamed of my brain. Now, I stand proud of my hard work and recovery. I'm not who I used to be, but who is? <laughs> We cannot step into the same stream twice. And the knowing that I am alive, awake, alert, and still a work in progress. Well, in my heart, I'm an overcomer. And I now can give thanks for all that led to my overcoming. And I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find this fighter, but you will see we're going to walk it out. And move mountains, we can walk it out. And move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, and I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, and I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up, high like the waves, I'll rise up, in spite of the ache, and I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, for you, for you. When the silence isn't quiet and it feels like getting hard to breathe and I know you feel like dying but I promise we'll take the world to our feet and move mountains. Bring it to its feet and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, and I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thought times again for you for you for you for you all we need is hope and for each other and that we 
need each other and we'll rise and we'll rise up in spite of the rain we'll rise up if striving age we'll rise up and we'll do it all again and I'll rise up rise like today I'll rise up in spite of the age I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up high like the rays. I'll rise up in spite of the ache. We'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again for you, for you, for you. Thank you. I'll rise up.